Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's weekly live immigration attorney chat with Immigration for Couples. If you are new to our channel, uh, welcome. And if you're watching this on one of our other social media platforms like YouTube, we invite you to come and check out our Facebook page, uh, like and follow our Facebook page, and so you can participate in future upcoming live events. We host these live events on a weekly basis to answer questions and provide important tips and information and as it relates to the world of immigration for couples. So let's dive in. I have a one topic here today to speak with all of you about. It's called the uh, I-601 waiver. And we've had a lot of questions about this recently. And so I decided I want to make a video to make sure that everybody understands, first and foremost, what is an I-601 waiver? And why is it required? And when does it come up? And in what processes? And what you should be aware of in your immigration case? So I want to back up like I always do and give you a higher level view, because I, I know that there's a lot of different forms and different numbers. Immigration law is complex. And I'd like to give you some context before we dive into what the waiver is and, and when it will arise in the process. So Immigration and Nationality, the Immigration and Nationality Act, it's a huge book of all of the laws uh, of, in, in the world of immigration. And there's a long list under I-212, there's a long list of what they call grounds of inadmissibility, which is immigration's fancy way of saying someone has a problem that in their, either in their immigration history or in their past that may prevent them from actually receiving their green card or, or might even prevent the person permanently from ever being eligible. There's a whole long list, like I said, of a lot of different problems that a, a person can have in their background. And they range from anything from uh, criminal related grounds to prior deportations to uh, fraud and misrepresentation. And a lot of times individuals will say, well, you know, I don't I haven't committed any crimes. I don't have anything, uh, any issues in immigration. I've never been deported. But the Immigration and Nationality Act has a lot of other issues. And sometimes individuals are actually surprised to find they have an immigration violation that they might not have been aware of. So it's important to understand that while you might not have criminal history and you might not have a prior deportation, there can be other issues that can arise in, in your case. Hopefully not. Hopefully that you don't have any issues, but it's important you know, to be aware of the Immigration and Nationality Act and all of the laws uh, that surround your eligibility to receive your green card. So as I mentioned, there are grounds of inadmissibility that immigration says, hey, this individual has a problem in their past. Maybe they overstayed a visa or they entered without inspection or you worked in the United States on a tourist visa when you weren't authorized to do so. And uh, some of those problems can be forgiven through a waiver process. That waiver process is exactly as it sounds, waiving that problem, waiving that ground of inadmissibility so you're able to still receive uh, a green card. There are some uh, parts of the Immigration and Nationality Act that have grounds of inadmissibility that result in what's called a permanent bar, which means an individual is never able to be eligible to receive their, their green card. Uh, an example would be saying that you're a United States citizen when you're not. That's a, called a false claim to citizenship, and that has a permanent bar. And that can actually be something that happens unwittingly. There were uh, times in, in the United States at some uh, driver's license branches when an individual would be uh, registered for their driver's license, they used to automatically register individuals to vote. And that's a false claim to citizenship because you're not actually eligible uh, to vote unless you're a U.S. citizen. So that's kind of just giving you an idea of how complex it can be and, and areas where someone might have an immigration violation unknowingly, unwittingly. All right. So hopefully that gives you some clarity, a little bit of background and, and how the waivers uh, can arise in the process or how grounds of inadmissibility can come up and then what the waiver is. So individuals have actually been asking us specifically about, hey, I've read about this form, this I-601 form uh, and this waiver and what is this process and what is it that we have to prove? And really the waiver process is something that will happen. It can happen in a couple's adjustment of status case. That's a case that happens here in the US. It can happen in a fiance visa case and it can happen in a spouse visa case. 
Typically what happens with a fiance visa or a spouse visa case when an individual realizes that he or she might have a ground of inadmissibility is that they'll go to their consular interview, that interview that happens at a U.S. embassy or consulate abroad, and an immigration officer will look at that person's background and they'll say, actually, we can't approve you for your fiance visa or we can't approve you for your spouse visa because you have this ground of inadmissibility, you're not eligible. And then they give you a piece of paper that explains why you're not eligible. A very common one is fraud and misrepresentation. Individuals who've come, as I mentioned, if you've come before on a tourist visa and you were working here or you obtained your tourist visa or a student visa or something of that nature and by providing false information on your application, fraud and misrepresentation could be a ground of inadmissibility that would show up at your interview. And then the officer would say, you're not allowed to receive your visa, you're ineligible, but you can apply for a waiver. And then that's when this I-601 waiver would come into play. And the waiver process, it, it depends, it really will depend on what your ground of inadmissibility ultimately is. But the waiver process is, is, a, is a process where you have to show immigration, you know, basically that you're a person of good moral character, that this was something that uh, it's not something that you've you know, done before. You don't have other immigration or criminal violations. And you have to prove hardship to the individual who's actually petitioning. So when we're talking about a couple, the petitioner is a U.S. citizen uh, or lawful permanent resident uh, spouse or fiance. The whole basis for this waiver is, will this U.S. citizen, will this lawful permanent resident spouse or fiance suffer extreme hardship, uh, a hardship if this waiver application isn't approved and if their fiance or spouse isn't able to enter the United States. It's much more complex than that. Typically, it's a very uh, complex process that we go through with our clients. We have a a one-on-one very long meeting with them to identify what is the hardship, what is the evidence that we can collect, and how can we prove this case to immigration? Because at the end of the day, These waiver applications are what they call discretionary. It's up to the immigration officer to decide, is this person worthy of receiving uh, this this waiver? And and is this person, uh, does this person meet that requirement of hardship? Will the petitioner really suffer uh, this level of hardship for this waiver to need to be approved? So I hope that that gives you a little bit more clarity about the the 601 process. If you received a notification like this at your interview and you're needing to apply for a waiver, we would be more than happy to help you. Please please check out our website at immigrationforcouples.com. We have a free resource center uh, for couples who are, whether you're just starting out or in the middle of your immigration journey, and we provide you uh, with a lot of free resources to help give you context and understand options and next steps. All right. Well, I hope that that provided you all with with clarity here today about the waiver process. Thanks so much for watching. If you're watching this on the replay, please do a hashtag replay. Uh, Let us know if you have any questions and we'd love to discuss them on our, our next Facebook Live. Have a great rest of your week. Take care, everybody. Bye.